What is up YouTube and all my fish keeping friends? How y'all doing out there in fish tank land? Today I want to share with you something pretty exciting. Uh, I found fry in my nano blue tetra tank. Now these are wild caught nano blue tetras, uh, Titocharax tompa potensis, and um, I found fry all through this tank. It's getting crazy because there's multiple generations or you know, there's, there's all different sizes of fry going on in here right now. Um, now I set up this tank very uniquely. Uh, honestly, right from the get-go, I wanted to set it up to kind of match a little bit of its natural environment, uh, mainly having some kind of floating plants, some kind of uh, shrubbery or plants on the surface. So really all I had at the time was some duckweed and some uh, hornwort, but it worked out perfectly. So I put the duckweed in there, the hornwort, and that was really just to give uh, the fish that came in from Peru a little bit of cover, help them to relax and feel a little bit more protected underneath uh, all that floating plant. Anyways, I went in here to clean out some of that duckweed not too long ago and little fry, like literally like little slivers of glass as uh, Dan from Dan's Fish would say, a sliver of glass. Uh, there's all different sizes in here. I'm looking at one right there. And that's one of the larger ones that I have right now. What's really pretty cool is how I separated this tank. It's just a 10 gallon tank, but um, I have so much hornwort in here that it almost makes a divider in the tank. So you have the duckweed floating on the top, the hornwort, which is kind of in the middle of the tank. Uh, the parents stay away from all of my activity and whatnot. They stay on the back side of the tank. Uh, so they're completely secluded over there. It's almost impossible to really see them. Uh, you kind of have to like peek around the duckweed or look down from above uh, to actually see them but they're over there doing their thing I feed them on that side to keep them on that side and then I feed uh, the fry from this side of the tank live baby brine shrimp as well as uh, I like to use uh, first bites they work as well and um, these fry are like microscopic so they are like living off of uh, microorganisms like infusoria literally on the glass and on all the leaf litter which uh, I have at the bottom of the tank. Uh, that's another important thing is I created a bed of leaf litter at the bottom of the tank, which uh, if the, I don't know exactly where these fish are spawning for sure, they could be uh, sticking their eggs to the undersides of the duckweed, or they could be just um, scattering, egg scattering into this leaf litter, and then the uh, fry make their way up the side of the glass and they come to the surface and they hide out. Not exactly for sure how it works completely with these guys but um, they uh, start out as these little slivers of glass there's a few of them on the glass I think I got a shot for you guys and some b-roll um, there's one right there there's one right there there's another one right there so there's literally three little babies just stuck to the glass right here and there you wouldn't even if, that's, if you weren't looking for them you wouldn't even know that they were there uh, you could just barely make out two little black spots for eyes and like a sliver of glass. But I am really excited about these fish. Uh, I have a nice school of them, so I have a lot of genetics. These fish are on the red list. They're, you know, they are listed as like uh, least concern, but they are definitely still on the red list. Uh, uh, their natural environment is really being threatened by uh, logging and illegal gold mining. And so uh, it's really nice to have some of these here. Uh, there's not too many people bringing these out of the Madre de Dios River Basin at this point. And so it's just really exciting to me to have them breeding. Uh, at this point, as long as everything goes well, I should have a huge school of these. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is just break them up into two schools and uh, let them breed, colony breed in those two schools. And then I will breed you know, breed, mix them back from those two tanks, mix the uh, the offspring of those two colonies back together. So that's kind of the long-term plan for these guys. I'm definitely a little excited about this if you cannot tell. Uh, I just wanted to share it with you guys, give you guys a little bit of an idea of the, uh, the tank that I've set up for them and what has enabled them to be able to spawn and for the uh, fry to actually survive uh, in the tank and have them being tank raised in a colony bread without having to pull the fry out. Um, I'm pretty excited about that part. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And it's really awesome to have the opportunity to share this with you. So um, if you like this content, you wanna see more of it, and you're not subscribed to it, then go ahead and click on that subscribe button down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. And remember guys, keep your tanks clean 
your fish fed, and have fun.